we lit into this, what, last Monday, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago now. And, uh, you know, the whole, is it straight racism? Is it jealousy? Is it somewhere in between? Um, and I asked the question, why, where are the other star names? But, I mean, you can rattle off names that people have heard of from UConn. Let's just put it that way. Uh, Tarasi, Stewart, and more. And it's all about Caitlin Clark. Well, now we have the Team USA drama going on for the Olympic team. And that leads us into the social media battle and response that has you pissed off for greatness. Yeah, and I, and I, I don't I'm know. standing with you here. I'm, I'm really trying to... Um, I want to preach a message of less division, more unity, level-headedness, thinking for yourself. So what I'm really trying, I am really trying, I'm, I am sitting here right now quietly within my mind praying to not lose it as I go oh. through this address, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I don't want to come at this with anger. And we, and, I don't. Because I'm, I'm trying to preach something and, that's not anger. We did not discuss this before the show, it's, and Vitello didn't think he was going to yeah. go off either. I, I, I'm just trying to compare the like, two. It's a, a level of anger that can blind you and make you blind to I, reason is what has got us in this predicament right now. And I think that's how Vitello would describe his speech. And I would say that his was authentic, and I agree with his take wholeheartedly. I feel like I will do the same with yours. Well, there's, you know, there's race blindness that people no claim doubt. to have, which, it, let's face it, is typically false. You, know, you, you, you see people as the color they are, as the race that they are. doesn't mean you right. hate, those, hate anyone because of their race or whatever it is, but I think some of that's foolish. And I think on the other side of that, we have racism blindness in that people are blind that something may not actually be racist. Because everything has to be racist, right? Everything has to be racism in 2024 America. One person who makes a living off racism is David Dennis Jr., who is a senior writer with Andscape.com. Every time I say Andscape, I want to say Manscaped. Maybe Manscaped is a sponsor of Andscape. I don't know. But David Dennis Jr., he makes a living fanning the flames of racism wherever he goes and where he went earlier was to Around the Horn, where he had this to say about Caitlin Clark and Caitlin Clark supporters. Uh, what you see, the, the mission statement of USA Basketball. Yeah, the mission statement is to win gold medals and represent the United States while growing the game. The part about growing the game, you need to win gold medals in order to do that. And for the history of Women's Team USA Basketball, what they do is they put the roster that puts them best equipped to win gold medals. And there have been a lot of players who have been snubbed along the way. Candace Parker being one of those players. And there can be a healthy sports debate about whether Caitlin Clark should make this team. And I'm of the belief that she is now one of the top 15 players available. If, even if Tarasi or whoever would not be there, there would be a couple of people like Arike who you could put above Caitlin Clark. The problem here is, and what concerns me going forward, is those people on the fringe that do exist, that are in real life, not just internet trolls, politicians, pundits, and people of the like who are using Caitlin Clark as an avatar to lash out at the people who they have disdain for, mainly the makeup of the WNBA, black women. So David Dennis Jr. says, quote, the people on the fringe to which he belongs. So he's on a fringe, and he's talking about other people on a fringe that have weaponized Caitlin Clark in their culture war uh, to fan their own brand of racism, where David Dennis Jr. is pointing that out. So David Hookstead, who writes for Outkick.com, posted this in response to David Dennis Jr. and others in media. Quote, the media and bitter WNBA players should be ashamed of accusing Caitlin Clark fans of being racist. It's disgusting. She's popular because she's electric on the court and a great role model. Reducing her success to her race is gross. I agree with David Hookstead. On that, And if that's the case and that's what's happening, that's something that I would disagree with and not the way I'd want to go about it. I went and read David Hookstead, his latest piece, about all of the racist claims surrounding Caitlin Clark and Caitlin Clark supporters. I'm going to read you a little excerpt from his story. You can read it at Outkick.com right now. Quote, voting for Trump doesn't make you racist. Liking Caitlin Clark doesn't mean you hate black people. And we can't let people in the media and WNBA create false narratives. Amen, David Hookstead. I wholeheartedly agree with that. 
I'll start again. Voting for Trump doesn't make you racist. Liking Caitlin Clark doesn't mean you hate black people. Completely agree with that. So yesterday I said, hey, let's give the benefit of the doubt to the U.S. women's national team. Surely all of these women aren't racist. They don't all hate white people. Hell, some of them are white. So maybe they love America. Maybe they want to win gold for their country again, so they'll get my support. And what I'd like to do is live in a country where we get back to supporting Americans because they're American. And even if we disagree with them politically, we can all unite in rooting on the United States of America to win a gold medal in women's basketball. That was my simple statement. That was my simple hope yesterday. And we edited a clip, and we posted it, and it's gotten hundreds of responses, hundreds of them on Twitter, on Instagram, across different platforms. Let me give you a sampling of some of the responses. To me, trying to get Americans to support Americans in the Olympics with the U.S. women's national team. Here's one of those replies. Uh, this is from someone who goes by Pat Forty Sucks. He says, quote, they literally hate you because of the color of your skin, Chad. Why rooting against a group of people that hate me and you is a bad thing is beyond me. Then on Instagram, we post the video also, yep. and I get a response like this. They've become the women's soccer team. Nobody will rot, watch or root for them. They're vile humans, talking about the U.S. women's national team. And the very next, didn't have to go far for this one to pull yeah. it, the very next response was, the fact you don't know what teams are playing says it all. If Caitlin Clark <laughs> was playing, we'd all want to know who the competition was. So this is someone claiming, Who hey, the Fever you, play next? If you want me or others to, to, to root for the United States of America, you better put the girl on the team that we want on the team, or we're not going to support the United States of America. By the way, kind of proving David Dennis Jr.'s point a little bit right, which sucks, because I think mainly what he's saying is completely wrong. Here's the deal. What David Dennis Jr. is doing is wrong. You don't fight people being wrong and people being dumb about something by being wrong and being dumb about something. If you don't want everyone to write about you and talk about you and say things about you that, well, you must be racist because you voted for Donald Trump or because you're a Caitlin Clark fan and you weren't a, a women's basketball fan before or a WNBA fan before, but because you're a Caitlin Clark supporter, well, you must be racist. You must hate black people. You must hate lesbians. You must hate people that aren't just like you. That's wrong. It's wrong to paint with that broad brush. You know what's also wrong? To call the U.S. women's national team a bunch of white people hating racists that I won't support because they didn't add Caitlin Clark to the roster. Come on, people. Come on. Don't fight dumb with dumb. Fight dumb with logic. Think for yourself. So many people that were against COVID mandates, vaccine mandates, that preach to anyone who will listen, to open your mind, think for yourself, don't be sheep. That's what most of the people in my mentions right now would tell me, right? Why would you get a vac vaccine? Why would you do that? Yep. Can't you see the left-wing government's just doing this, this, and this? Think for yourself. Yep. Don't be groupthink. Think for yourself. That's what we do on this show. We're not going to stop doing it. We think for ourselves. You should think for yourself too. Don't get caught up in the back and forth tennis match of, I can't stand it when David Dennis Jr. and media members like David Dennis Jr. try to implant racism and imply that everyone is racist because they don't agree with them. And they try to put that into everything that they're doing. By then responding and saying, if you don't agree with me, you're racist. Boy, if, they, if they're saying that, I tell you what, everyone in that U.S. Women's National, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna root for them, why? Because I think they're all racist, come on. They're not all racist. Open your eyes, don't be sheep. You know who has their eyes wide open and who I really appreciate and respect? Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark was asked about things being weaponized in the media by people on the fringe to try to weaponize Caitlin Clark in a culture war, and she had this to say about it. I think no matter what you do or what is done to you, it becomes a topic nationally, and a lot of times it becomes divisive. I wonder from your standpoint how you feel about people using your name 
in whatever culture wars or whatever wars they're fighting. How do you feel about that? It's not something I can control, so um, you know I don't put too much thought and time into thinking about things like that. And to be honest, I don't see a lot of it. Um, like I said, like basketball is my job. Like everything on the outside, I can't control that, so I'm not going to spend time thinking about that. Um, you know, people can talk about what they want to talk about, um, create conversations about you know whatever it is. But I think for myself, like you know, I'm just here to play basketball. I'm here to have fun. Um, I'm trying to help our team win. Obviously, we've We've won three games and, you know, we feel like we've been in a position to win a few more than that. And, um, you know, my focus is on helping us do that, but um, I don't, you know, pay much mind to all of that, to be honest. How much do you think that it's impacted your ability to cultivate relationships within the league? You know, I think everybody in the league understands, you know, one, we're excited about all this attention we're getting. I think we're um, appreciative of it. I think the league has been great for a really long time, um, but, you know, my focus is on my teammates, like, they've been amazing. Um, I don't think it's impacted me making relationships on my team. Um, you know, I'm not obviously talking to people on other teams on a daily basis. Like, I have so much to focus on here, and, you know, getting my teammates to, to trust me and do all that is my main focus. Same with our coaching staff, and same with this organization. Um, yeah. But I understand your focus, but I'm just curious, though, are you bothered that no. folks would attempt to weaponize your name in whatever fight they're fighting? No, I, I, I don't see it. I'm, that's not where my focus is. My, again, my focus is here and on basketball, and um, you know that's where it needs to be, and that's where it has been, and I'm just trying to get better on a daily basis. So there you have three questions from Jim Trotter, all poking at the same thing. Just hey, sue in the league. will you apologize for people that are weaponizing your name, even though you have nothing to do with it? Hey, do you think it's your fault for not speaking out against people that you're not paying any attention to as to why the rest of the league doesn't like you right now? because here's your chance to say something or do something. Um, I, I think pretty idiotic, quite frankly. And, and it is her job to play basketball. And she has no control over the commentary around her being in the WNBA. So there's Jim Trotter trying to get his agenda out there in, in, in what he's doing. Here's one more clip from Caitlin Clark. And, and there's something very specific that she's about to say that I want to reiterate. Here's Caitlin Clark. Caitlin, I know you mentioned that you know you want to focus straight on basketball. I definitely respect that. But when just asking you directly, when people use your name for racism, misogyny, whatever, yeah. what is your response to that specifically? Yeah, I think it's disappointing. I think um, you know everybody in our world you know deserves the same amount of respect. The, the women in our league deserve the same amount of respect. So um, I, people should not be using my name to push those agendas. Um, it's disappointing. Um, you know, it's, it's not acceptable. Um, but yeah, I mean, this league is a league I grew up admiring and wanting to be a part of. Like, some of the women in this league were my biggest idols and role models growing up and helped me want to achieve this moment right here that I get to play in every single night. So, um, just treating every single woman in this league with the same amount of respect, I think is just a basic human thing that everybody should do. Like, you know, just be a kind person and treat them, you know, how you would want to be treated. And um, I think it's, you know, very simple. Very simple. Respect. Treat people how you'd want to be, be treated. And that would be my message to people that want to call everything racist. It, it works on both sides. Don't fight you not liking someone calling everything racist by responding and calling everyone racist. It's not getting anywhere. It's not helping anything. It's also not true. It is creating a false narrative that David Hookstead wrote about that's happening with WNBA media. And I agree with that. So let's not create another false narrative by claiming that every member of the U.S. women's national team, that well, they, they're all racist. So I'm not going to support them like the person in my mention says because they, they hate white people. They hate me. They hate you because we're white. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. The women's national team hates Chad because they're, they hate whites. How many whites are on this roster? As I, I said, there, there are says, white women also, on the roster. Also, but you know, Caitlin Clark, clearly that last clip came after the previous one. Yeah. The previous one sounded like Michael Jordan. Very, no, the, I don't want to talk about it. doesn't bother me. on basketball, yeah. But if, if, if David Dennis Jr. has a platform, uh, uh, who is a, he's the son of, of course, Senior, who is a civil rights activist. Um, and with, with he's the... David Dennis Sr. was a member of the original Freedom Riders. 
who rode from Montgomery to uh, Jackson, Mississippi in the 60s, early 60s. Um, they'll pay attention to David Dennis, David Dennis Jr. at Anscape, which was previously, what was the website? Uh, the Undefeated. The Undefeated. That this is their new version of that. And I referenced David Dennis Jr. in a column, along with Mike Freeman, uh, a few weeks ago, where it's the low-hanging fruit. Um, and it was Harrison Butker and what he was saying at the uh, commencement address and how it, it of course, they took it uh, and, and spun it into somehow he was anti anything but white, white and straight. It's the low hanging fruit here. Um, if Caitlin Clark, though, I do wonder this, Jeff, if Caitlin Clark said, you know what, all of you who support me, stop saying my name in response, stop feeding and poking the fire. Stop adding kerosene and gasoline to this. Would all of the Caitlin Clark supporters do that? She has a massive platform she could do and use in this. And keep this in mind. At some point, Diana Taurasi was the next best thing for the WNBA. Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart, they were the that era version of what we're seeing now. And forgive me for not seeing the racism in white versus black during that time. And now all of a sudden it switches to, oh, yeah, but they're lesbians. You know, they, if you don't if you can't win that argument, you switch to the other one. Why can't you just uh, I don't hear anyone saying that she's a starter on the US women's national team. No one's arguing that. And if they are, it's a back-and-forth debate that's as boring as LeBron versus Michael Jordan right now. You agree, Chad? Yeah, I, I don't think people are getting that carried away about but it's a, she you, needs to be a starter. I mean, I'm sure that no, but, some are. But if you're, a, if you're pro Caitlin Clark, which I am, I love watching her play. It's the only reason I'm watching the league. But I'm not going to watch her play in the Olympics, even if she's on the roster. But I don't hear anyone clamoring, like, you want to watch her sit the bench? I'd rather have her on commentary. Next, next, next is the, the Olympic broadcast team will be racist, anti, they're, they're against whites, I, because Caitlin Clark's not a part of the broadcast team. You know, fundamentally, I cannot get behind constantly pointing something out and bemoaning it and getting irritated by it right. and then responding to it by doing the exact same thing. It, it, Mirror that, image. That's my that's my issue. Is just and I don't often read my comments. It's very clear. But I was reading through it last night, and I'm getting I'm going more and more insane reading what people are saying. This was kind of the Bud Light cancellation thing that I got yes. into. I'm thinking if I mean it just again I'm trying not to get angry here, <laughs> but it blows my mind if you go back and look at what people have said about certain things that if they support something, it's okay. You better not cancel this thing that I like. But I'm fine canceling anything else. I'm anti-cancel culture, only what it involves things that I right. like. It can't I, – I hate that, that two-way street of playing that thing. It should be a one-way street. If you support America, then root for the U.S. national teams to win gold medals. I'm not telling you to watch every game. They're probably going to blow everyone out in the Olympics, this team. With or without Caitlin Clark, they're going to blow them out. So we'll see her on the floor, but, hypothetically, as the walk-on who gets the, the three-point shots at the very end of a game in a college game. I just like, I don't we like – we, it's so like – Clay's talked about this too, right? Like politics is so much now like uh, your favorite team. It's like being an SEC fan. It's like not only is it okay that I want to root my team on, but I want to see everyone else in misery. Like, it, it's shot and fraud, right? You're rooting well, for everyone else to have misery, and you enjoy that. Well, guess what? It's like I people that want the country to go to hell so they can be proven right, and their team can be proven right. How about root for the country to do well? That's my top priority. I'd love to see the United States be a great place to live in, and I want to support the country. I don't care if my side is right or not on the issue. I just want everything to work out. First and foremost. And of course, we all have our own political beliefs 
or this and that, but that's kind of where this is a much smaller thing with it, but it's a microcosm of everything else. I'd rather see the U.S. women's <laughs> national team lose to a country that doesn't have as much freedom as the United States of America or a bunch of people who absolutely despise and hate the United States of America because I want to be proven correct about my love of Caitlin Clark, and I want everyone to know that I'm not a racist because I love Caitlin Clark, but yet I want all the women representing the U.S., my country, to lose. It's this hey, that, thought pretzel that blows my mind every time I'm even trying to very say cyclical. it out loud. Here's the thing. I mean, it is wash, David rinse, and repeat constantly with all of these arguments. Well, but think about who is benefiting here. Kennedy Carter. How many times have we said her name? She's now an algorithm. She's a part of an algorithm. David Dennis Jr. is a part of this Caitlin Clark attachment. Monica McNutt. Stephen A. Smith admitted it. Hey, did you know about Monica McNutt? No, you didn't. You do now because she was on first take. And everyone's talking about her, even if you don't watch first take. Both sides are who they hate including David Dennis Jr. and what he said. But think about both sides here with this quote, if you didn't know he said this. An avatar to lash out at the people who they have disdain for, mainly the makeup of the WNBA, black women, etc. Now, all you do is just change the word black to white, and it's the same argument. Now let me say it from the other side. An avatar to lash out at the people who they have disdain for, mainly the makeup of the WBA, white women, etc. Same exact argument, just flipped. And it's just nonsensical to me. And if, if I mean, if it's I, like I said, Jen, is there a section on the newly formed charter flights for the honkies in the back? Is there a cracker aisle? Like, if, if, if you really buy into the racism aspect, where are where are the other white women on the roster facing this persecution? Because they, at one point, were the next best thing coming into this league that was desperate, desperate for a star. No one talked about this league. That's what it is. The head it's coach not... of the Indiana Fever is a white woman also. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Seems to be going okay. Oh, but... Chad, I mean, you've got Don Staley on the U.S. Women's uh, National uh, Basketball uh, Board. You know, it's, you can't have it. Well, it's, again... It, it's, it, it's, um, it's it, maddening. It's, if, you, if you go so... And look, I, I get it. If people who vote for Donald Trump, when someone says, you know, everybody that does that, everybody that supports Trump's a Nazi, that, that pisses you off, right? It yes. should piss you off. Because it's ridiculous if someone says that. It's equally ridiculous to say... Boy, they didn't take Caitlin Clark. They must be. They must hate white people. They hate all of us. Chad, how could you support this group? But that that U.S. Women's National Team, they all hate you. They hate white people. There's white women on the team. They don't hate white women. Not all of them. We got into this with the Megan Rapinoe stuff. Does Megan Rapinoe piss me off? Absolutely. Does she hate a lot of the things I love about the United States of America? Yes. <laughs> Is she representative of every thought of every woman who represents the United States on the U.S. women's national team? And does that transform me into someone that's going to root against the U.S. women's national team when they take on Iran, who absolutely hates everything that I stand for in the United States? No, Hell because no. it's ridiculous. Just as ridiculous as when you hear anyone in the media who tries to paint Trump supporters as Nazis because they voted for Donald Trump. It's all stupid. So don't fight stupid with stupid. This is my message for the day. Fight stupid with smart. You don't have to get worked up about it and don't have to get mad at people playing the race card like David Dennis Jr. or Jim Trotter, who does it all the time too, or others by then playing the race card. Don't do it. Step back and say, hey, what you're doing is ridiculous. Full stop. Full stop. D don't then, hey, you're doing that, so now I'm going to do this. Oh, you said this about me, so now I'm going to say this about you, even if what I'm saying about you is also ridiculous. Don't fight dumb with dumb. Fight it with smart, and we'd be a lot better off. And Everyone give, would be a lot better off. And give the 
give the energy and the passion to those that are actually trying to be fair to whatever storylines out there. Say whatever you want about Stephen A. Smith. He's going to tell you exactly what he thinks. Uh, David Dennis Jr. is going to write and give thought based on Anscape and what, you know, was the undefeated. Is that obvious? Um, to me, I, I kind of just, I smirk at it the same way I do some of the, who was the, the not, you, you had one of the posts, he, was, he mentioned someone's name. Not so-and-so. Oh, not uh, uh, something about, uh, or I hate Pat Forty. I hate Pat Forty. Yeah, something, not Pat Forty. Like yeah, whatever that, it was yeah. like. I, I mean, you might as well just have a fake alias on, yeah. on social. Like, it's the same type of regurgitated mess. I, I would just say, like, hey, look, hey, I, I go back to uh, Outkick founder Clay Travis, who's buddies of ours, and, and we've yes. worked with him. When Clay Travis hired us to host this show, he never gave us any advice about how to think or what to say. He hired me and Hutton because he knew that we could host an entertaining, informative show that was not going to be like every other show that's out there. And the basis of that show is that we were only going to be asked to think for ourselves. There was one mandate, one mandate coming into the show. Yeah. And that was that we could not go on this show and say that sports should be canceled over COVID. And Hutton and I looked at each other and said, that's fine because we believe that to begin with. Yes. Because that's what should happen. Do you know why we thought that? Because we weren't damn sheep. Because we thought for ourselves when COVID madness was happening across the country. When our government was telling us one thing, we were looking around and saying, boy, it just doesn't quite add up. Everything being said. We thought for ourselves. We didn't fight dumb with being dumber and being sheep. We fought dumb with smart. I'm going to continue doing the same thing. Hutton's going to continue doing the exact same thing. Absolutely. That we were hired to do. That's why you tune into this show. We think for ourselves. You started tuning into OutKick. A lot of people, millions of people, based on the response to COVID and what was going on then. It's because it's a site and an outlet that thinks for itself. This show will always think for itself. Always. And, and you better believe, Chad, that the likes of David Dennis Jr. and others are getting the exact response they want from this. You're feeding the ego that is a ridiculous uh, side and take overall. Also, stop taking the... what Harrison Bucker said as racist. Yeah, is clickbait BS. Well, stop. And that's it. You, but you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, and the response stop. to him is helping him. By the way. Uh, David Dennis Jr. sounds like a serial killer. They're just that name when I hear it every time I think we're talking about well, someone who murdered a bunch of people in Wichita, Kansas. You know what else sounds like a serial killer? Let's go back to the Instagram comment. Talking about if you ever uh, kneel during the anthem, basically, was this conversation that was going on. Okay. If you show this here, uh, the top one, there it is. They become the women's soccer team. Nobody will watch or root for them. They're vile humans. Why do we have to speak in this extreme language? Vile humans? Vile. It sounds like you're actually talking about a serial murderer or child rapist. Or you're writing when a script. When you say vile humans. I, look, you're writing I, a script for Game of Thrones. I don't agree with those that kneel for the anthem. And I don't agree with a lot of the reasoning behind that whole movement to begin with. And I don't want to get into all of the nuance that it's involved to have that conversation. I don't agree with it. I also don't think that someone who did it is a vile human. <laughs> Uh, that, that's how, again, you describe pedophiles and, and serial killers. Vile humans? Come on. There's no need for that level of extreme language either. Yeah. That's, that just, it doesn't... Be smarter. Be smarter. Be smarter. That, as we go into the weekend, Hutton, not just my weekend, but the official weekend. There you go. I just ask people to please be smarter. You think that's going to happen? I, I think that there are going to be people that watch this video. First off, I don't know what the no, title what of this saying. video is going to be. So someone's probably just going to read the title, and then they're going to bitch at me one way or the other sure. based on seven words that they see on that. But if someone watches this, I think a lot of people are going to get it, and a lot of people are going to agree with me, and I think a lot of people, it's just not going to register yeah. completely what I'm saying. They're going to hear one thing, and then they're going to have a problem with that, or they're going to hear one thing, and they're going to love that. But if I, if I am we who heard, I am. okay, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, who I am, Hutton. I'm, 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 and Chad, um, you're a man with a new haircut, and I'm I'm loving it. Uh, Thank you. Let me, uh, by the way, what would a serial killer sound like? Davy Hudson knows. 
a serial killer has his phone number. He's, he spoke he spoke to a serial killer. <laughs> he has. Uh, I will also By add By the way, in, I'm not saying David Dennis Jr. Let's, let me... Oh, let he's me, not a serial killer, but that I? name sounds like the name of a serial killer. And it's a name that his father gave him, the same name. I, I, I don't... I, I've always thought about, could I give my name to my son? Yeah. And I'm thinking... I mean... Now, I, ask I like me my, that question. I like my name, but could I... W- would I give my name to a son? <laughs> no. Hell no. No, no, no. I, I if wouldn't David either. Dennis Jr. sounds like a no, serial no. killer, Chad Withrow sounds like a douchebag. And, you know, both may be correct. Who knows? But it's like... Uh, I am a bit of a douche. Man, at, at some point, you have to... Uh, so then you're the junior, so do you have to make the third? You automatically have to pass it on, don't you? And then you get to the fourth, and then somebody stops it. And I'm thinking, where, where did the line of... You know, the name arrogance cut off to where it's not, you know, it's not, nah, I'm not going to do this anymore. We're done with it. I'm the fifth, and it's where it's, it's ending. Well, at what point does do my descendants get rich because they have a Roman numeral at the end of their name? Because I feel like everyone with I'll Roman Kenneth numerals Ad- uh, we need to ask Kenneth have Adams a lot the of money. Yeah. Kenneth, Kenneth Adams the fourth. I, I think I should start the trend just to ensure that my lineage has money, more money than What's I up, have. Kenny? So by the fourth or the fifth, yeah. people have money. Uh, do you just start that, and eventually they have money? I, I mean... I want to know how that works. I, 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 I want to tap into that vein. If your name's Gordon, what was his name? Gordon, yeah, for Gordon Sargent. Sargent. Yeah, I mean, that sounds how like... old Gordon Sargent doing on the leaderboard today? That's down. Out. Everyone seems down today. I'm shocked that uh, Colin didn't give us a, a score update immediately when we walked in on Gordon Sargent. Uh, Davey, what does hey, a Scott. serial killer sound like? You've talked to one. Uh, this guy sounds like he chain smoked for going on 40 years. Okay. And, and the Yellow reason- teeth. Uh, I'm trying to think back. I'm trying uh, to describe. <laughs> Most serial killers are good looking. So uh, the, uh, the the guy you were John referring Gacy? to, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, hot. D- Dennis <laughs> Dennis Rader is the BTK killer. Uh, so that's the serial killer you were referencing earlier, Chad. Oh, the BTK, yeah. BTK. Also, I have a Roman numeral in my name. I'm not rich, so. What? Uh, why don't you use it? I don't know. What? What is it? The third? No, Does the everyone second. in your family actually they, they, Davey, too, no, not David? Uh, David's my dad. Okay. Um, I'm the second. Specifically, my dad avoided using Junior because he did not want anyone to call me Junior. I love that. What, what I, is I your that. number? Thir- three, four, five? No, I'm it? the second. Just the He's second, just yeah. the second. Which means you, I mean, you must pass this on to the third, right? Will you have a it's, third? It's uh, Davey Hudson it's something I've thought absolutely. about. Absolutely. Well, so, we got to find Isabella. First, this really, so. I, 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 think, I think I'm more pissed off. <laughs> Isabella now. will decide. I think I'm more pissed off now than I was talking about the stupidity I was just talking about, because I have a terrible name, Chad. I no, can't you don't. do anything. No, 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 with no, 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 no. I can't church yes, it up. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can't church it down. I C. can't. C. Thomas th- Withrow. I can't. I could do that. That but churches that's an it initial. up. David Hudson the second is a badass name. It's regal. And <laughs> Davy here has decided to go with Davy Hudson. <laughs> And his actual name? What is it in a, a due date? Let me remember Davey. when uh, uh, who uh, was Ethan it? Tremblay. Remember? But his name was Ethan Chase, and he said Ethan Chase sounds like a great actor. Ethan May Tremblay I? sounds stupid. Can we create an account? That's what Davy has done here for Davy Hudson. He's taken an amazing name and made it worse. And I guarantee you, Isabella will pop up. David Hudson the second. That's an impressive name. That's on a wedding announcement for Isabella right there. Just saying. So, yeah, I went by well, that would a be different name. No, no, no. Say, I'm, I'm thinking like she's at, but Davy would be arguing that it should be Davy. No, I'm I'm fine with you know everything formal. It's David for me. I just when I'm with my friends, it's Dave or Davy. Okay. My dumpster fire of the week, by the way, is is just continuing right now as we speak. <laughs> it's incredible. Your phone? I've mi- I've missed four calls since we started this, this segment. Yeah. I- I'll explain know, a little bit wait. later. You've told me, but this it yet. is. I was not angry at all during this open. I will be pissed when I'm explaining what's going on right now. What is this, Chad? It's insane. I'm, I'm saving it. Okay. I'm saving it for Dumpster Fire of the Week. What is happening with my phone right now is a personal dumpster fire. And I'm getting close to actually starting a dumpster fire in this parking lot out here at 6th and Peabody and chucking my phone into it if this continues. And no, it's not this old phone's fault. My it's old not. phone continues to persevere with zero issues. It will live forever based on the I new I may update. never change phones. I've told you this and yesterday. people can make fun of it all they want, but I love this damn phone, and I'm never changing it until it just doesn't work, they, which I'm convinced will never happen. Chad, they, they announced uh, that the new updates for iOS 
um, through Apple. Will be automatic. Uh, automatic, but it's only going to work for certain phones. And yours is well below that threshold. Yep. So it started at 14, right? You will. Ne- I think it's right. I think maybe 13 or 12. Mine is a 9S. I, you will never have another update. I don't think they have S at the end of it anymore. Mine's a 9S, and it starts at 14, so I'm good. You will never have another update based on what they announced. Because all the updates are going to be emoji and AI related. When I brought this phone in to consider an upgrade, the person working at the store said, if you like that home button and that phone has not broken yet, you should hold on to that thing for dear life. They saw Chad's phone and said, excuse me, sir, you have to be a customer to come in the store. I don't know if the good people at Apple would have liked that approach, from the salesperson that day, but she said, you keep that phone forever. If you like it, keep it forever, and don't try to upgrade and see how long it lasts. Do you miss your flip phone? No, I don't miss the flip phone. There's not that much difference. See, I, flip I didn't want to get rid of this because the home button. I would miss the home button. That's what I like about this phone. I, I love, full discretion, I love my BlackBerry. Love the trackball. Same kind of feel to the home button. Yeah. Uh, then I, I understood what it was all about with iPhone, and now I understand what all this other stuff is up with. You don't have the face ID, do you? No, and I'm not going to shoot a movie on my phone ever either, so I don't need all the advanced um, camera work. I, I don't need phone. cinematic mode like with my Chad videos have, I'm taking. Chad doesn't have autofill on his phone. Right, I'm not going to suddenly be Scorsese <laughs> with my phone and just set it up everywhere and start trying to win an Oscar. Chad's going to make film. I'm a big film guy, but I don't make. I'm not a filmmaker. You'll leave the the I, Instagram I, models f- and influencers to their. I'm to a their film. Passion. I'm a film watcher. I'm not a filmmaker.